please help me welcome our first speaker. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I am Juan Pablo. Yes. The code bigger. Okay. Every people. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, oof. I don't remind remind how to get bigger. The <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Common plus inside. Okay. Yes. Yes, because I have so many layers installed here because I used to use for programming in Haskell. And sorry. It's okay there. Okay. Uh, okay. My name is Juan and work for System. Uh, not here in Spain. <laughs> and I work uh, mainly in Scala. Uh, and this is a talk about uh, tagless final encoding in Scala, which is a very, very uh, well-known technique in Scala uh, for building uh, internal DCLs uh, with algebras and interpreters and all that stuff. Uh, and this is a code example uh, from my work. Uh, I built this code example based on some case of my work. We build recommender systems, so uh, we have some kind of user that asks for recommendations, and we select an algorithm for that user, and uh, we run this algorithm and uh, return the recommendations to the user. So basically, uh, in an imperative code, we have uh, something like this. Uh, getting the user or some uh, database or some place, getting the best algorithm for this user, uh, run the algorithm, uh, some, somehow limiting, limiting the, the recommendations that we are going to retrieve to the users. And finally, we, we build up together and we uh, return to the user. So I, I build this code to show Douglas final encoding without using any any library, any library, just with uh, pure Scala code. So I am going to go really, really fast. Uh, what should we do when we build uh, a code in Douglas final encoding? We should have something like our DCL, something like this, in a full comprehension. Uh, where we define how our program is going to behave. So this is the same code I, ha I used to, to have in an imperative style, but in a functional way with my, with my DCL, where I get the user, uh, I get the algorithm for the user, execute the algorithm, uh, get the limiter of the, of the algorithm, and filter the results back. And somehow, at some point, I'm going to print out the result. Everything here is built on terms of option, or maybe type, as, as you wish. And what should I do here uh, to, to run this, uh, to build this tagless final encoding? I should define my algebras. So basically, the algebras is uh, our set of operations that uh, operate on some data structure. So I'm going to define how is going to be my retrieve user uh, operation, my uh, retrieve algorithm operation, my filtering operation, and so on and so forth. And everything I'm going to build in terms of uh, a higher kind of, kind of type or type constructor F, everything is, is built on that. There are a lot of things going wrong there. For example, this is a summon uh, values, no? Uh, there are a lot of things, but basically the, here I am defining my algebra, how I'm going to call this, uh, these operations from my for comprehension in a functional way. The, after this, I need to build my interpreter, how this is going to behave based on what I want to be this F uh, or higher kind of type F is going to, to take form. So in this case, since I am running everything 
on option type or maybe type, or I am saying, okay, I want the recommendations and I want to get an option type and it's for comprehension, it's going to behave in, it's going to, to do the, the option monad. Uh, I have to build my interpreters in terms of option. So to go there, once I have my, my algebras, I have my interpreters. So I say, okay, I have for this, uh, for example, algebra user repo, in the option type, what is going to happen? This is okay, so far so good. I transform my imperative code in a functional way with this uh, tagless final encoding. If I run this code, it's going to run perfectly. There is no, no problem. Uh, everything is going to be fine. But what happens if I want, instead of having an option value, because sometimes I, I, I want to say, okay, get the user from some database or from some, some, some place, uh, and it's, it's going to retrieve me some user or none. But I don't want that. Perhaps I want to have the user or either an error saying this user doesn't exist or something like that. So I want to build my program in terms of either type. And this is the magic of uh, tagless final encoding in whatever language because tagless final exists also in Haskell in our uh, functional programming language. With m the same program I build here, I can only write my interpreters in terms of either and have uh, a specific errors for my, for my uh, computations. So I'm going to show you that. This is the same program I used to have. And here I have, call, I am calling my program in terms of either or in terms of option. And the only thing I need to do is to add my interpreters in terms of either. So if I run this program, since I am calling with either or option, I'm going to show you that for both interpreters is running perfectly fine. You are going to see what is happening. Here for some users I have recommendations and for other users when I have error, unexpected error, it's because I am, I am having back a none, not a left value of the either. So the either is more expressive. Uh, and I wanted to show this, uh, this uh, technique uh, and the power of this technique to build the interpreters. The same we can do for, for example, testing. We can build our interpreter in terms of ID, for example, and build the, the, the ID object because we are not using cuts, we are not using anything to test our program without needing anything extra. Uh, and that's all. <laughs> Questions? Thank you very much. We have time for one question. Anyone? Okay. Thank you very much.